Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to discuss compound interest. Interest paid on principal plus interest is called compound interest. After a certain period of time, the interest earned so far is credited or added to the account, and the sum, the principal plus the interest, then earns interest during the next period. So interest earns interest when we are calculating compound interest, which is very different from simple interest. In order to calculate compound interest, you have to know the compounding period. Interest can be credited to an account at time intervals other than a year. For example, it could be done semi-annually, quarterly, monthly, or daily. The time interval is called the compounding period. When we're calculating compound interest, we'll need to know the number of times per year interest is added, and we call that value n. If the compounding period is semi-annually, for example, n would be 2. If it were quarterly, n would be 4, monthly, 12, weekly, 52, and daily, 365. You'll have to look for these key words to determine the value of n. So now let's talk about how we actually calculate the future value of compound interest. There is a formula. If P dollars are deposited at an annual interest rate of R compounded N times per year, and the money is left on deposit for a total of M periods, or another way of thinking about it is you can get M by um, calculating the number of times a year times the number of years. So M is equal to NT. Then the future value A, the final amount on deposit, is given by A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the M. Or instead of using that extra variable M, you could alternatively use A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the power of N times T. That's actually the version I prefer, but you can use whichever one you like. So let's look at an example for finding the future value. So we're asked to find the future value, which by the way, simple interest problems will ask you to find the future value as well. And in both cases, we're talking about the variable A, the amount accumulated in the account after the time period ends. We want the future value of 8,560. Again, that's your principal P the same principal P we talked about when we talked about simple interest. At 4%, that's still your R, your interest rate, which in decimal form is 0.04. But here we have the clue that we're not doing simple interest because it says compounded. So we know we're doing compound interest. Since it's compounded, they have to give us the compounding period, which is quarterly, four times a year. So n, the new variable that we need for compound interest, would be 4 in this case. And this is going to go on for 8 years, so t, our time period, in years is 8. Knowing that we're using compound interest, we write down our compound interest formula for the future value which is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT, and we just plug in. So our future value A is going to be the principal 8,560 times 1 plus our interest rate R in decimal form 0.04 divided by the number of compounding periods per year, which is 4, raised to the power of the total number of compounding periods, which is going to be 4 times t, 4 times 8 in this case. There are a lot of operations going on in this formula, and each operation is an opportunity to mess up on your calculator um, because of order of operations and just generally making errors plugging it in, um, into your calculator. So what I like to do is to clean this up a little bit before I put it into the calculator. But you have to be careful because remember we're talking about people's money and they want every penny. So we never round off until the very end of the problem. But there are a couple of things we could do here without rounding off. For example, n times t. 4 times 8 is 32 and we don't have to round anything off. That's an exact value. Another thing that I notice is inside the parentheses, we have addition and division here. Remember, division comes before addition. 
Um, but instead of having to communicate that to your calculator, notice that 4 goes evenly into 0.04. So you can divide that without rounding off. That's exactly equal to 0.01. So we can change this problem to say A equals 8,560 times 1.01 raised to the 32nd power. So let's try entering this into our calculator. So we're going to put in 8,560 times, and in this calculator, in order to raise a number to a power, we use the exponent button that looks like a little caret symbol, a arrow pointing upward. So you type in the base, which in this case is 1.01, .01, raised to the power of 32. Now the calculator does know, this is the TI-30X2S, most Texas instruments work the same way, that um, the exponent comes before the multiplication, so you don't have to worry about that. So the order of operations will be correct, and I'm going to put equals. And so we see the total value is $11,769.49. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.